Hello and welcome to today's episode of So What's the Catch? It is January 22nd, or January 26th, wow. Good start. Great start, I know. Best um, up the dates. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try that again. It is January 26th, 2022. There we go. See, I I know my math. You got I mean, at the, at the end of the day, Josh, I'll defend you. The time is relative at the end of the day. Yes. That's actually a decent point from Chirp. Yes. A rare... It's all relative. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, so a lot of ha- a lot of shit went down um, on over the weekend in terms of the NFL playoffs. So let's just get right to it. Let's not waste any time. The Bengals defeated the Titans, but only because Ryan Tannehill is not that guy. Simple as that. I mean, he, he was always he was always just a game manager. He didn't manage the game. No, that's, he that's, didn't. That's the problem and with game managers: is that w- yeah. when you have to, you know, throw the ball, you end up in a situation where you're not going to look too good. I mean, his first and last pass of the game was intercepted, so that's yeah. that's a pretty fitting end to that to that Ryan Tannehill playoff chapter there. But I mean, are we really surprised? Are we surprised no. at this? He's like a 34-year-old quarterback, too. I mean, age has to do with it. It's just about skill. It's about it's about scheme. It's about, like, in a perfect world, this is what you, you get in this town here, is what Ryan Tannehill just gave the, the Titans. Okay, it's a very similar offensive scheme. They have a very similar skill position, I guess, uh, grouping in terms of dominant running back, very – Game manager quarterback, but I mean, theirs is just more consistent. Mm-hmm. That's really about it. Uh, Tannehill blew it, and that's that really sucks for the Titans. But I mean, let's not bury the lead here. Uh, Evan McPherson to the rescue. Okay. Uh, he was okay, exceptional as the Bengals needed to lean on him quite a few times uh, during the game to propel them to victory. I mean, gives you some questions about how. Uh, but their postseason longevity, but Evan McPherson is the uh, the man of the hour in Cincy right now. That is true. Cause one hundred percent. Because the Bengals offensive line was like a freaking turnstile. Like you we get told a you, sack. we tried to tell you this was gonna happen, and it did, but the one thing that we also said was that there's also a, a one guy who's capable of blowing it for everybody, and it was Ryan Tannehill, and that's basically what happened. Yeah, <laughs> he only threw the ball 19 times, too. Like, they tried to keep this from happening. And, unfortunately, Henry was not 100%. I don't care what he or anyone else. Oh, he wasn't. Not at all. He was not if, 100%. If, if he was 100%, I think they could have won the game. Maybe, but he wasn't. So that, yeah. that's what matters here is that he right. had that steel plate. He had like the what the four or five screws in his foot. I mean, he was never going to be a hundred percent. Let's be real here. Of course not. Do you think this is the end of Henry's career? It's not the end of his career, but if we're going to talk about like has he plateaued? Has he peaked? You want to have that conversation? That's an entirely different one. Yeah, but like yeah. after like after that two thousand yard rushing yards got in his head. I don't think I has anything to do with it. Really, I, I it's just more of. Circumstances, you know, it's what happens to every running back in this league. You know, it's you injuries happen, aging happens. Uh, running backs' lifespan in the NFL are drastically shorter than a lot of other positions, so that's to be expected, too. Um, yeah, but the, the one thing I do want to point out though is like, I'm not saying Burrow had a bad game by any means, but like, before people are so quick to crown him like the next Aaron Rodgers or the next Tom Brady, like, he didn't throw any touchdown passes, he, he had one interception. And this game was won off of, what was it, four or five Evan McPherson field goals. Like, a rookie kicker had to provide the points for the Bengals yeah. to get over the hump and be a Tennessee team that played a bad game. And mm-hmm. that's the thing that has me concerned about Cincy moving forward, is if they can only score 19, you know, it, it's not enough points to keep up with the Chiefs or the Rams or maybe the 49ers, but not the Rams or the Chiefs at this point. <laughs> so. Yeah. Sure, I'll give you – Brian, I will give you that one, and I do think you're right on that, that 19 points is not enough. Um, but you also have to credit Tennessee's defense for that because, again, they got, what, nine sacks? Like, if if your quarterback gets sacked nine times, that's going to shake your confidence a little bit. Yeah. 
So, what are you laughing about? <laughs> nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Finish the point. You were, on, you were on to something there. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I thought I had, like, said something that made you... No, like, no, 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 no. Start cracking up or something. Nope. But if your quarterback is getting hit constantly, whether it's a sack or the, the defensive player is hitting you after you release the ball, they're going to get rattled and their confidence is going to be shaken. It's a given. So maybe Joe Burrow towards the end of that game wasn't quite as confident at throwing the ball. Maybe he was a little bit, um, I don't want to use the word traumatized because I think that's a little extreme, but I guess shaken. Yeah, he was definitely shaking. Uh, they weren't the first team to get to Joe Burrow in that manner either, though. So um, that wasn't really so surprising to me. That's true. You know, they, he's had games where he's gotten sacked five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Like, this has happened all year to them. And that that's, like, the one thing that, that just keeps me from wanting to pick this team every week is, like, they just have such dramatic holes. Um and it's like when you can only squeak away a three-point win when Tennessee has one of their worst games of the year, it, that concerns me. Yeah, and I, I know a lot of people are just like saying, oh, Burroughs is the guy or whatever. I think they're talking more about just like him outside of football. Yeah, people like Joe the, Joe the guy, you know. They like yeah. his demeanor, they like his swag. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. A lot of people. They, they, they like his energy, yeah. They, wanna, they want to crown him. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, but he just hasn't done it. Not right. Man, I don't even that level yet. What, what do you say he surpassed Baker though? Easily. He's the best quarterback in the division. I'm sorry. He is. Yes. You yeah. What? Yeah. Even over Lamar Jackson? Yes. Yes, he's better than Lamar Jackson. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. 100%. And as far as Joe Burrow and where he's at now, I'm not worried about where he's at now or what the talking points of the talking head shows that you see on television throughout the day is because uh, first it, take. It, 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 any of them. Okay. Uh, it, I'd rather be in a drunken bar argument than watch a show that is a drunken bar argument. Okay. Let's be real here. Um, but looking at, you know, the trajectory, he's on the trajectory. I think that's, that's what you need to identify. He's not there yet, but trajectory wise on the path. 100%. Yes. Do we want to move yeah. on? I think we've said it. So, so, so we all got Chiefs beating the, the Bengals, we, right? We haven't got there yet. Mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. My bad. They didn't mean to jump the shark. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got more special teams to talk because the next game uh, also came down to a special teams uh, field goal, as well as some other plays that were, you know, key moments in that game where special teams gaffs had a big play. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the Packers special teams blow it for them uh, against San Fran. That's not the first time Green Bay's special teams have been a problem for them. <clears throat> it's happened to them throughout the season. But I think it's kind of interesting looking at the bigger picture that, like, you get the number one seed, you have a bye week, get all your guys back, and then both number one seeds are bounced in the – for in the first round, essentially. It's because you look at both number one seeds. They weren't real number one seeds. Let's be honest here. Uh, the Packers, like you said, have had special teams issues all season long. They've been a fairly inconsistent offensive team. If it's not Devontae Adams, that offense dies. As we saw that Rodgers basically targeted uh, Adams and uh, the running back. I can't remember his name. Aaron Jones. Yeah, those were his only two passing targets outside of, I think, two pass attempts. So mm -hmm. he was basically just living off of those two guys. And that's not sustainable. He had no faith in Alan Lazard. He had no faith in anyone who wasn't one of the top two guys. And when that happens, you see teams get stuck. I mean, we saw this, uh, and this is something that I, I, I heard mentioned on Pardon My Take earlier this week, that towards the end of the Brett Favre era, he got locked in on Donald Driver. And he would only throw to Donald Driver because Donald Driver was his guy. And, and Bubba Franks. That Bubba Fanks was way before this, but Aaron Rodgers is basically locked into Devontae Adams. If it's not Devontae Adams, he's not throwing to anybody. I yeah. see what you're saying. I get yeah. what you're saying. I agree. 
It's Devontae Adams or nobody. That's his that's his reads. Guys are open. He just says the hell with it. I'm throwing to Adams. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we'd be uh, remiss not to mention, too, that Rodgers remains 0-4 against San Fran after guaranteeing on draft night that they would regret not drafting him. I just think it's just the ultimate. Yeah. It's funny, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny how that's come full circle this year. Um, With this, though, like Green Bay only had 10 guys on the field on the game-winning field goal. If mm. that doesn't show, like, how much trouble they've had with their special teams, I don't know what does. I mean, their special teams just bad. Having ten guys, that's just that's a failure in management across the board. Because the, the head coach has to be paying attention, the special teams coordinator has to be paying attention, and neither guy did. Okay, even the players out in the field couldn't like look around and be like, "We don't have enough guys out here." Like you know, when you don't have enough guys out there, and they didn't, and that's just that's a complete failure. And as as far as the the blocked punt that resulted in a touchdown earlier in the game. They weren't even running a punt block on that game. The, it was yeah. just bad blocking. Yeah. That guy just happened to be in the right spot in the right time to block it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this they really blew this game. Like, it, there's not I, – I don't know. I mean, San Fran's defense, obviously, you know, that they played a game. But, man, like, the Packers just did every single thing they could possibly do to, to blow this one in front of their home crowd and arguably, probably – Rogers' last game as a Green Bay Packer. It, you know? it, 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 this was a big upset. No one expected this. I agree. I, I, I was very surprised by this. I mean, but like you said, James, they, you know, they're not a true one seat, or not a true one seat coming out of the NFC. Like there was no real top team in each of the conferences this season. Did um, you say Jimmy, Jimmy G was the reason they won? No, Jimmy G. No. Was it, was, it was the 49ers defense. It was the yes. 49ers defense. Is the reason they won. Jimmy G. didn't Tannehill it. We'll say yeah. that. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you very... used Ryan Tannehill's name as a verb. But I mean, it is one now. I mean, we yeah. say it time again. Yeah, you know? yeah it's like we right, do with so... Baker. We say that Baker's gonna Baker. You know. Yeah. It's, we know but what's coming. He's gonna bake it. <laughs> yeah, he's anyway, gonna bake moving it. on. You are right though that neither number one seed in the AFC and the NFC really felt like a number one seed. So I'll concede on that one. Yeah. But I still think it's c- kind of cool, fascinating, whatever word you want to use there, that in the same weekend, both number one seeds got eliminated. Well, what I think you had here is you had two clusters in, in both conferences. You had clusters of good teams and clusters of teams that are going to lose. Yep. Okay. And that's where we're at. They're the, the clusters of good teams, they're the ones that are left. The clusters that our teams are going to lose, they were eliminated a week ago. Okay. Yeah. Another cluster you want to emphasize here is uh teams that are limited by the play of their quarterback. So so teams that are ready to to compete at this level, but they're limited by quarterback play and they can't get over the hump. And that's where the number one seed in the AFC was this year. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'll I totally agree with you. Tennessee needs a new quarterback because you got somebody as talented as A.J. Brown. You got a wide receiver as talented as anyone in Julio Jones. Um, Maybe he's a little past his prime, but I would still put him up there as one of the top receivers. A.J. Brown? You said said, A.J., yeah. Oh, yeah, you did say that. And you got a star running back in Derrick Henry who, as we said earlier – isn't going to be able to sustain what he he was doing long term because that's just not how it works with running backs. Right. And the Titans' defense is, I wouldn't say they're elite necessarily, but they're good. Maybe, maybe, maybe great. It depends on what you specify as a great defense and whatnot. But uh, anyway... You just can't hang your hat on the running game in today's NFL. You can't. Bingo. You cannot. You can't. And this is the problem with the Browns, too, is like, I mean, I'm not saying having Nick Chubb is a problem. Nick Chubb is the man. He's awesome. He's great. But part of the problem is, is that, like, people want to just build around Chubb and Chubb to be the focal point and this and that. But then when something happens, like what happened to Derrick Henry, we watch how quickly that gets derailed. It's uh-huh. it's a league that you need elite quarterbacks to win in today. But, 
You just, to counter your point, we do have depth in running backs. But that doesn't yeah, matter. But, but it's still – the point remains the same. It's it's like running back units in the NFL are not getting teams over the hump right now. Yeah, yeah I mean, you've, never see, you've never seen Adrian Peterson win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys he's one of the, running back. Or so. Barry Sanders. You never saw Barry Sanders win a Super Bowl. Stick with the Titans. Chris Johnson, you know. He, what? Chris Johnson. Eddie George. Well, actually, they had Steve McNair. I take that back. Um, but Brian, what I will say is Seattle, when, when the Seahawks trade for Marshawn Lynch, they kind of started to build their offense around beast mode and what he could do, and they were able to – win a Super Bowl, and then get back to the Super Bowl in that same year. So I think that's an exception to your overall statement, but still. That team's an anomaly. Even that long ago, too. That team's an anomaly, and that was more about their defense than Legion it was their boom. offense. Yeah, it, was, it was their defense. It was not their offense. Their offense was just there and put in the right position that the defense forced a turnover. Let's be real mm-hmm. here or force the team to punt from their own 20-yard line. They get the ball at the 40, okay? When you're in near or in plus territory, it's a lot easier to score points than if you're starting at your own 20 every time. Yep, um, 100%. You, you can't deny that Marshawn, once they got Marshawn Lynch, the Seattle like changed their identity of who they were as a team. Well, sure. I mean, yeah, they, they had Marshawn Lynch as their, as their main yeah. guy, but – Let's be real here. When they won the Super Bowl and went back to it, that was like the end of Marshawn Lynch being like really good. Remember, so, they didn't give him the ball in that situation. He he didn't have the best goal line numbers that year. He didn't. To be honest, yeah. he, he didn't. He was very overrated in goal line situations. Right. Too. Which also, Bolts is a genius, so there's so much more behind that. But you get my point. It's Yeah, I know, do. Like, if he's the guy and he's the identity, then like, of course, he's going to get the ball. But no, there was a lot of question marks there. <laughs> And yeah. of course, Belichick baiting them into one of the most brilliant, you know, plays in yes. football history. But anyway, so, I think we should probably move on to the next game, though, because the Sunday games are where the real action happened. These were the games of the week. Um, games of yeah, the year. Games of the year, absolutely. I mean, two of the best postseason games I've seen ever, really. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll just start in order. Um, the day started with the Rams eking out. Uh, Tom Brady and the Bucks after another amazing comeback. Um, Matt Stafford exercised some of his Detroit demons, and when the team needed to uh, needed him to down the stretch, uh, Matt came through. So it was pretty cool to see as a as a guy who has a soft spot for Detroit in my heart, being a, a guy that spent a lot of time in Ann Arbor. Um, I, I was really happy to see that. But yeah, it's uh, so much to say about this game and and the way that it ended. But again, special teams. Matt Gay, thirty yard field goal to win it. You know, it's yes. I mean, but, the, the the bigger special teams point is the complete malpractice on the kickoff because they were they should have squibbed that kickoff. Apparently, the call was for a squib kick, but um. <clears throat> Are you referring to the Bills? Oh, team? yeah, yeah. We, we switched up. I'm sorry. We had yeah. Bills Chiefs in the rundown, and I switched it with uh, Rams. Yeah, yeah no, my bad. bad. My bad. Uh, but we either way. With that, and we'll go back to uh, Rams Bucks. Uh, we'll come back to that game later. But uh, but let's be real here. Looking at Bucks and Rams, that was some. Uh, we almost saw a Lions, a Lions there for Matthew Stafford. Let's be real here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Tom Brady almost reenacted his uh, his very historic Super Bowl win against the uh, against the Rams in this game. Uh, you mean the uh, Falcons? He, he was playing the Rams in this game. In this game, they played the Rams. No, but you're. <laughs> I said reenacting his Super Bowl win against the Rams in this game. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. He almost did that. Okay, <laughs> there was the very questionable penalty that was called, but was called a dead ball penalty, which that rule sucks. By the way, yeah. It's a rule, though. Uh, like, it's the rule. I get it. But, like, the there was one tweet I saw, and it made perfect sense. Like, you're telling me if it's on a fourth down and um, a guy doesn't catch the ball right there, you can just blast him wherever the hell you want, and you still don't give them a 15-yard advantage? Like, you can just do whatever egregious hit you want, and you it's get really the ball. Good point. It's a really good point. Yeah, that's a valid <laughs> point. You could body slam somebody, but hey, it's not going to be a personal foul penalty. Or if you, it, what, if it you, is, you could, you you could give them a su- you could give them a suplex. 
You yeah. could. And guess what? Your team gets the ball because it's a dead ball penalty. Which yeah. Is horse shit. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things to a lot of things to be concerned about if you're a Rams fan, though, uh, with how this game shaped out after, you know, I, like, yeah, it's Tom Brady. And, yeah, we've seen him do it before. But still, to, to you know what I mean? It's like yeah. you you got to prepare for this moment. You got to prepare to be up by that amount and know how to close out the game. And they just were clueless. It was like they they let it play right into Tom Brady's hands. And it's like there's question marks about the defensive coaching. There's question marks about the defensive unit in general. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of red flags there for me, if you ask me. Yeah, I got, I get that. Um, I see this game a little bit differently, although not entirely different than what you're saying, Brian. But I think it played out in the right way for Matthew Stafford, in that, you know, Brady was able to make the comeback, albeit because of some blunders by the Rams, but also because Tom Brady is just that good. But still. You think he's going to retire? We'll get to that. We'll talk about about that later. But my overall thing is, like, for Brady to make that comeback and Stafford, if Stafford was still with Detroit, he probably would have been shaken and, like, all – Gone all out of whack. I'm going to push back on you on that one because uh, there was that infamous Lions Browns game all those years ago where Corey Williams literally separated his shoulder and he still threw a touchdown pass as time expired. That's okay. true. Yeah, and he was a rookie when he did that. Okay, mm. so if he's shown anything, it is the ability to bounce back and not be shaken from, I guess, undesirable circumstances. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows I was high on this guy. I picked him to win MVP in preseason. Um, I thought you were always right thought, for a while. I've always thought that Matt Stafford was a, was a guy who was capable, and it was more about the team and the environment that, that he was mm-hmm. in. Um, and so I wasn't surprised by this, but but James, you were also right. Like, he, he almost did what he, he did in Detroit several mm-hmm. times before. Um, but Josh, you're also right at the end, you know, the ball was in his hands at the end of the game and he made the drive, you know, he put them in position to kick the game winning field goal. He did exercise some demons, but he also didn't look the best at moments of the game too. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, a lot of great things with the offense, of course, like with the, um, but yeah, there's a lot of question marks there as well. If you ask me. Yeah. But Tampa Bay on that all out blitz, there must've been some sort of miscommunication or something. There was. Uh, not everyone who was supposed to blitz blitzed. So that resulted in basically a partial blitz mm-hmm. and the coverage behind them not being aware of what's happening. And so when that happens, you're going to end up with a free runner downfield, and that allowed Matthew Stafford to essentially seal the Bucks' fate. Yeah, That was a beautiful – you got to give Cooper Cup um, credit on for a beautiful route, though. Because if he doesn't run the correct route – it doesn't matter that it's a partial blitz and a miscommunication. The Rams could have still screwed that up. But I mean, well, it was, I, it was usually I would agree, but he was so wide open in this case. It was just kind of a, you know what I mean? But it was still a great catch, great play, right place, right right time. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. Sure. Everything about that is is, is right. Uh, the, the only thing I'm not going to give credit to is the route. It was a nine route. It was a go route. He ran yeah. straight. Uh, it, it, let's be real here. Um, but he made the catch. It was a great pass by Stafford. Uh, I've always been a big guy. You know, I, I lived in southeastern Michigan up a couple years ago, so I heard lots of Stafford hate over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, listen, you guys don't know what you have here. You don't mm-hmm. know what you got. And yeah. they, they, I had to listen to people calling to sports talk radio telling them how bad Stafford is, calling him Pad Stafford or Stat Padford or whatever version of, version of a pun name you could think of. Mm-hmm. And be like, he's just not good. I'm like, you guys don't know what you have here. He just needs to be somewhere else, and you'll see. And, you know, I, I was someone who advocated for the Browns to trade for Stafford last year. I wanted mm-hmm. them to make that trade. The Rams did not like, good for the Rams, but the Browns missed the ball on this one. Yeah. But, um, 100%. Let me say this about Matt Stafford, too. Um, what is a lot of the things that people say about Patrick Mahomes? It's that he, he brought, like, the – the different arm angles and the no look passes and like these playground plays. 
Like, I'm sorry, but Matt Stafford's been doing that for a decade. He's been mm-hmm. making sidearm throws. He's been making no-look passes. He's been making NFL street playground throws for his entire career, and he just hasn't got the attention for it being in Detroit, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. I was not surprised by by his season with, with the Rams at all, and I'm not surprised to see that he's in position to uh, maybe make it to the Super Bowl. And yeah. let me tell you, uh, Lions fans everywhere that would call into uh, 97-1 in southeastern Michigan hated the arm mm-hmm. angles. They hated the sidearm throws. They hated the non-traditional throws because now look, yeah, because yeah. the Lions would finish the season six and ten or five and eleven or go nine and seven one year and make the playoffs and lose in the first round. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. the arm angles. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You've always been wrong. Yeah. Ask anybody that's ever played with Matt Stafford. You can't find a wideout that's ever played with that guy that haven't said that he's a dude that can just yeah. do it all. So, yeah, yeah. I think he was slept on for his whole career, and he's finally getting the attention he deserves. So good for Matt Stafford. Yeah, he was still, just- still criminal. He only has one Pro Bowl. Oh, uh, the Pro Bowl. We're not doing Pro Bowls. Anyway. <laughs> no, we're, we're moving on from that. But um, Stafford, Last game's coming up. <laughs> okay. Stafford was just trapped in Detroit to, like, like what you – like, like sorry. Like what both of you are saying – People didn't get to appreciate him in the way that he should have been. Right. They'd only catch him on Thanksgiving and stuff, you know? And it's a hundred percent. Like this guy is great. Mm-hmm. And nobody was able to see that because Detroit never did anything. Mm-hmm. That's or a good he- segue though, to go into the next game, uh, talking great quarterback play. Cause Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes uh, went toe for toe with two of the most incredible postseason quarterback performances of all time. So. Oh, man, that game was rigged. What? Well, not rigged, but I thought that game was just like uh, just how like you didn't have enough chance to have that possession again. You, I think you should have possession after you score a touchdown. We'll, we'll get to overtime. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't okay. think it was rigged, though. I don't think the result was predetermined in any way. No, no, I don't think that. Okay, okay, that's not what you meant by that. I got you. Then. If you want to talk NFL overtime rules, we can talk about that after the game here. Yeah, yeah. But, um, let's get let's to the, talk about the first. actual game. I mean, final two minutes, you just see an explosion of offense between these two teams. You see two elite quarterbacks showing that they are elite, and you know. Not to uh, say kudos to me, but kudos to me. I want a Josh Allen from day one, so kudos to me. Um, <laughs> but that was some amazing offense. You saw amazing play after amazing play. It, you saw quarterbacks do what they're supposed to do with the game on the line, down by a score with less than four minutes in the game, when you don't see that here in Cleveland where you have a quarterback ranked 40th out of uh, in that same situation over his entire career up to this point. You have to be able to do what these two guys did to win a Super Bowl. There's no chance what we have here in Cleveland could, to do anything close to that. None. Absolutely no. not. Not a chance. Nope. And that's why I just don't see teams like San Fran. I don't see them coming out Super Bowl champion this year. Yeah. I just think that it's it's going to come down to one of these guys. One of these guys with the ball in their hands. like Because, mm-hmm. I, I mean, the elite quarterbacks in this league right now are – incredible i mean there's there's four or five guys that are young right now that are all elite level talents and it's 100 it's an awesome time for the quarterback position for the guys who have one yes. um, but yeah it's uh 25 points in the last two minutes of the game mm-hmm. i mean that's insane just insanity right there yeah um, big play after big play by each quarterback big plays by the receivers uh also in this game huge kicks um, made in this game as well. Um, Why are you not taking the squib kick though? That I wanted to get to that. Too. Okay, so I, I started to go off on that for a second, but I ran. I read the rundown wrong because it's in different order than that we were talking about it. But I uh, did that. My bad. It, it, it's all good. Uh, they were supposed to squib kick the kick. That was yeah. the call. The kicker was warming up and was not in the huddle, so he did not get the call for the squib kick. Oh, hey. Okay. I yeah. didn't know this. I didn't know this until oh, probably about two hours ago. Okay, cool. Uh, Fill us in then, because I didn't hear this yet. Yeah, uh, please. So he was not aware that the call was for a squib kick. So he kicked it away. Which, first of all, you need to be aware of the situation at hand and realize that this is a squib kick situation. 100%. Okay. 100%. And, it, additionally, it should have been communicated if 
we score, we're doing a squib kick. Yes. Minutes beforehand. Mm-hmm. Like if we're in a situation where there's seconds on the clock, where each individual second in the game matters, we're squib kicking. Yep. This is an auto squib kick situation, and he kicked away. Yeah. I, it's a complete failure of identifying and recognizing the moment. Okay. Because a squib kick forces them to pick up the ball and return it. They burn three to four seconds off the clock. Yep. Correct. And, and you know what? Holmes they don't have the time throw. to get in the field goal position. He's got one throw to get him in a field goal position in this case. And then, you know, obviously the odds are much higher with that than when you give him time to make two or three plays. Yes. Mm-hmm. But he's the best. I mean, he's the best in, at, at this right now. Like, guys know that you can't give him time at all. Like, the kicker has to know in that situation, too. Like, you, you, you squib that. You, I don't. I don't understand. It's a squib kick situation. I mean, yeah. they're not getting to the defense on that final drive for Buffalo. Like, they didn't even, like, uh, attempt to jam Kelsey at all. They just said, um, here you go, Kelsey. Let him go. Here, it was bizarre. Just up in the middle of the field, catch and run. And yeah. that's exactly what happened. You you can't do that. Yeah. You have someone there to jam him up. If you get a five-yard defensive holding penalty, so be it. Yeah. In this case, I think both things are true. I think the overtime rule sucks, but I think that the Bills had every chance to win it in regulation, and they didn't. Sure. Well, if you're a Bills fan and you're blaming it on the overtime rule, you're wrong. Um, but if you're a regular, if you're an NFL fan and you you wanted to see what many of us wanted to see in this, the action to continue and to let these quarterbacks go toe for toe, like 100, percent like this overtime rule is just not working. No, I, I the hate, overtime, I hate NFL overtime. I really yeah. do. The overtime rule is total bullshit. It needs to go away. Thank Why? You. Just change it to do be like what college the college. I football. hate college football's play. Minus the football. two point conversion rule I, that you just implemented. That's that one sucks college. too. I I am not a fan of college football overtime. Okay, I don't understand why football is like the only sport where they don't play the entire period. I mean, there's the golden goal in hockey or whatever, but yeah. that's different because it's a different type of scenario. But you look at basketball. They don't stop scoring once the first team scores. They nope. play the entire period. Play the entire period. If you're still tied, go to a two-point conversion off then, okay? Or, or go to a field goal kicking off. I, I like that. That's a good play, I like so, that. Play the entire period first or a shortened version, so 10 minutes instead of 15 if you want. Right. Play and then that. if the offense does what they need to do to keep themselves on the field and keep the D off the field and they eat that clock, then good on them, you know, but yeah. at least – at least you know you have a chance, you know. Right. You know, it's just... and, but like you, what you were saying earlier, James, yeah, they screwed up the kick, but once you did that, Buffalo's defense, you can't just let Travis Kelsey just be like, hey, we're not going to tackle you. I mean, that was just bad defense by them. They had the chance to, to stop the, the Chiefs before overtime. They didn't do it. So, I mean, yeah, overtime sucks. But don't blame overtime for losing. Don't blame the coin toss for losing. Uh, okay. Don't blame the new conspiracy if I've never seen someone flip a coin with tails up first as the reason why they lost. Because I've seen that making the rounds today. Oh, God. Your defense had plenty of opportunities to make a stop. Uh, as the number one overall defense in the league this year, uh, down the stretch, I get your gas, but make a play in those final 13 seconds, game's over. Yep. yep. They had every opportunity to win this game, and they didn't. So yeah, it's, it wasn't Josh Allen. He put them in position to win the game time and time again. And He um, played a perfect game. I don't know what – I mean, you, you couldn't ask more from him. Yeah, he yeah. played a literal perfect game. Um, a lot of the same could be said for Mahomes, but he did have a couple throws that were – um questionable we'll say that it could have been he's had issues with turnovers all year and he got close a couple times is what i'm yeah yeah and we'll see what buffalo's coaching staff looks like like brian dable could be the head coach somewhere next season leslie frazier the bills defensive coordinator he could be a head coach somewhere next season so i pray to any franchise that hires leslie frazier as their head coach we've seen him as a head coach he wasn't good Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, but, but still, it's a very Brian, real. Brian Dable, uh, you have my, all, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay, I'm impressed by what he's done. Mm-hmm. Okay, but still, it's both are very real possibilities. So, I think this is Buffalo's best. What about, what about Jim Fassel? Who? Anyway, anyway, this was Buffalo's best chance, and they blew it. I still hate the overtime rules, though. I I think it puts way too much emphasis on the coin toss. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I hate it. 
Yeah, they need to take a look at it. That's for sure. Um, it is bullshit. It is bullshit. It is bullshit. So we've got some older quarterbacks that have been knocked out of the uh, postseason whose futures are in question. Uh, yeah, we had Brady with the ominous comment on his podcast. James, you want to um, tell us a little bit more about that? I'll just paraphrase here. Uh, he was talking a lot about his family and uh, how Gisela hates seeing him out playing, uh, getting hit every week. And it's just, I've seen this type of phrasing and talking before from athletes. And it's usually prior to a retirement announcement. Just yeah. the way that he's saying things and phrasing things, it's usually going to see, uh, I've decided to retire about, you know, two weeks later. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the, the final episode of the, the Man in the Arena series still has not premiered on ESPN or whatever. Yeah, they're holding on to that. They're holding on to that because I think that's going to be the retirement announcement. I think that that show was part I, – I think he knew going into the season that this was like kind of his plan all along. But I agree. I think he's definitely leaning towards retirement because if yeah. there's one yeah. thing about Brady, it's when he loses in the postseason, all he wants to talk about – is getting back to the Super Bowl and winning it. And that wasn't the case this time. It was, uh, yes. you know, and that really, as soon as I saw that press conference, I was like, ooh, this is not good. I don't, you know, we might have seen this last game. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, I I know, James, you don't love, you hate Undisputed. So Yeah, it's a terrible program. I hated it as well. Okay, I understand that. But I heard something interesting from Skip Bayless the other day when they were talking about this whole thing. Well, that's so, just not possible. <laughs> yeah, that's it's so, Shannon, maybe. the all the all knowing wisdom of Skip Bayless. Anyway, he was talking about like maybe like he goes to San Francisco next year because that's where he's from. He's like, let me give it like one more go, like make it come full circle by playing in my hometown for my hometown team. It was basically like that. So. That's all I'm going to give you from Skip Bayless. I know you guys hate it, so. Was, was this before or after he threw a Zeke Elliott jersey in his dick microwave? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, because he's, he's spewing nonsense here. Let's be real here. Let's, let's evaluate the 49ers for just one second because I don't want to spend any additional time than I have to talking about Skip Bayless. Um, who did they draft in the first round last year? Trey Lance. Uh, who is their current quarterback who's still under contract? Jimmy G. And so this makes sense in what dimension? Zero. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, knew I, that was I, I think that that's just part of their show is speculating about everything. So Yeah. I, I knew that out. was probably the response I was going to get from. I don't feel bad for you anymore because we've made it abundantly clear we don't like the guy or the show. So <laughs> just <laughs> into it. Yeah. Like yeah I, no, I know. I'm not feeling bad for myself. I was expecting that answer. I just wanted to see what type of reaction, and I got exactly what I was expecting and what I wanted. You're welcome. Oh, Perfect. thank you for that. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> let's talk uh, championship game previews here. Yes, yeah. let's do that. Let's make our picks here. So we got Bengals. We got Chiefs. Bengals have been a nice story. They've been fun. Chiefs. Bengals. It's it's Patrick Mahomes time. Uh, I we saw the the Bengals win a game powered by field goals. Field goals ain't gonna beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Right. Okay. Let me t or Gaha Field or whatever the hell they call it now. It's Arrowhead. Fuck that. It's That's always gonna be Arrowhead. Yeah. Let me remind you. They changed the name. Something stupid. I don't remember what it is. Uh, it's like it's G like Gaha Field. Jiha Field at Arrowhead Stadium or something stupid like that. I don't no, know what it is. It, That's it, what it is. Doesn't matter. It's Arrowhead. Arrowhead. Yeah, it's Arrowhead. But anyway, I know that we can't take too much stock from a regular season game because the regular season and postseason are two completely different animals. Totally <laughs> understand that. But we we did see the Bengals beat the Chiefs in Week 17 in Cincinnati, and my here's what I'm taking away from that game. Not necessarily that the Bengals beat the Chiefs. That's separate. My main thing is Kansas City got up on Cincinnati early in that game. Mm -hmm. And most teams in that situation would probably would have packed it in and said, okay, we got no chance because they know how powerful and potent that 
Kansas City offense is. But the Bengals did not do that. They rallied the troops, and they came back and won. And that's the game that won them the division. So going into Arrowhead and playing against the Chiefs again, again, playoffs, regular season, two different things. But still, I don't think the Bengals are going to be intimidated by playing the Chiefs, by playing against Patrick Mahomes. I think the Bengals somewhat know that they can hang with the Chiefs now. So I think the Bengals can do this. I mean, here's what I'll say. Do you know how much stock I'm putting in that game? Zero. Zero. Because they weren't playing in Kansas City. Kansas City, I believe, was still down some of their defensive starters in that game. Mm -hmm. And guess what they are not down currently? Defensive starters. Right. Okay. You look at how the offenses are performing at this moment in time. The the Bengals are settling for field goals like it's 1975, mm-hmm. while all the Chiefs are scoring touchdowns like it's going out of style. So, yeah, the it, Chiefs are seven point favorites in a in a conference championship game. That's a lot. I think the Bengals can cover that. I think they can cover, but they're not winning this game. If, but at, at yeah, I just don't see it. I don't see Evan McPherson, rookie kicker, um, being enough to push them over the edge against Patrick Mahomes in this potent Kansas City offense after what we just saw them do against Buffalo. I just don't see it happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I'm not saying it's not possible. I refuse to say that anymore. You know, I yeah. say the Bengals have maybe a – I'll give them a 25% shot, but, like, I, I think it's a safe bet picking Kansas City money line. That's fine. Um and part of this is like I picked Cincinnati from the start to win the Super Bowl, and I just don't want to. You're just being stubborn at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm kind. I'm trying to stick to my guns, but hey, if can if Kansas City does win, I will come on here next week and I will say, hey, I was wrong. Like I tend to do because. Well, yeah. that's how sports shows work. We say one thing one week, and then the next week we see if it was right or wrong. That's how all of them work. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Not wow, unique. Brian, you anyway. don't say. Well, you were pretending like this was unique to you only. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what we do. Everybody does that. If you say something wrong, you have to be accountable yes. for it. Like it's, you're not no, there's some, there's some people that still stick to their guns even when they're wrong and just ignore evidence. That does exist. Yeah, they're like the, the, the morons on the talking head shows. Like, I just destroyed about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they ignore <laughs> evidence and just say what's on their mind. Yeah. I mean, I'm just giving you a hard time, Josh. There's no, there's no thought into that. They just, they just spew and just word salad comes out. It's word mm. vomit, okay? Word, it's, not, it's, it's word of diarrhea. Mm. Okay, yeah. anyway. Word vomit, diarrhea. Anyway, anyway, but my other thing with the Bengals is like people are going to say, oh, the Bengals, they they don't have a great playoff history and all this and that. Joe Burrow wasn't part of that, the playoff struggles that the Bengals had. Jamar Chase wasn't part of that. Zach Taylor wasn't part of that. T. Higgins wasn't part of that. I could go on and on. These guys don't know any better, so – they're playing more free and like we got nothing to lose. The Chiefs have a lot to lose. This is their fourth consecutive AFC championship game. They're trying to go to their third consecutive Super Bowl. So I think that could play a factor. I see the Chiefs in a runaway. Yeah, yeah I see the Chiefs. But we shall see. So let's move on. I think so. I hope it's a high scoring game and they go back and forth and and Burrow does get the offense moving, but I I just see that offensive line getting violated all game long like they did last game. And, you know, I I don't think Evan McPherson is going to be enough to get them over the hump. It's not. You got to ask yourself is Joe Burrow not throwing for a touchdown uh, a sustainable way to win? It's not. It's not correct. He's got to throw for TDs, multiple. He's going to have to match Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen did it and still lost. Yeah, that's what's crazy is, like, you look yeah. at how good of a game Josh Allen had and they still lost. So, Joey Burrow's looking at that right now. He knows he's got to have a big game, you know. Um, a lot of this is going to fall on his shoulders for sure. Mm-hmm. So, 49ers-Rams, obviously, I'm sticking with the Rams. 
going with Rams. I, I got to go with Stafford. Stafford and the Rams. Shirk, you like the Rams in this one as well? Yeah. Josh, I can't remember. Did you pick uh, San Fran or did you pick L.A. here? Uh, looks like he's stuck. I, I, think he, I think he's gone. He's he away for a moment, but, um, I think he. I think he did pick the Rams, so I think we're all on the same page here. Uh, I I really want to see the Rams advance for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, I don't want to watch Jimmy Garoppolo in another Super Bowl. Yeah, we saw how that goes. Uh, it, you want to watch bad quarterback play uh, in the Super Bowl if, on the biggest stage. Uh, if if they win, he's the mo- he's the one of the worst quarterbacks to win one. I mean, I, I don't know about that. Because uh, one I, of the worst, I can think of a couple from the past uh, twenty five years or so that are, I would say, definitively worse or at least performed worse. Yeah. Than, which Dilfer is Johnson, uh, Brad, Brad Dilfer, Brad Johnson, Ben Roethlisberger in his first Super Bowl. Those are three of the worst quarterback performances, and they all won. Would you put Flacco in there? Flacco actually played well during his Super Bowl. Or or uh, Nick Foles. Nick Foles played well in his Super Bowl as well. But let's so let's talk well. about this game at hand first. Um, I want to oh, see Odell Beckham Jr. Not- go to the Super Bowl because I want to see all of the Baker bros on Twitter have to just stare the reality in the face that Odell Beckham Jr. is thriving with a real fucking quarterback. I'm yeah. assuming we're talking about 49ers Rams. Yeah, who's yeah. your pick? Rams. Okay. Perfect. We all picked the Rams. Yes. I just um, I, I think the Rams are, are, are really good. They're going to have some some issues with the 49ers defensive front. Uh, don't know if Andrew Whitworth is playing again this postseason, but his absence obviously played a factor in the last game. Yeah. I imagine it will in this game uh, if he's out again. And, you know, you still look at Stafford. He still has those moments of inconsistency from time to time, but he's still a really good quarterback. Mm-hmm. It's just can they keep the mistakes from piling on top of each other like they did against the Bucs? Right. If they can do that, they should win easily. Yeah. Obviously. I think yeah. with – Here's the other part of the equation for why I'm picking the Rams, because I feel like football purists would appreciate the 49ers being in because of the way they played the game and all that. But I'm a guy that loves high scoring affairs, like going back and forth, like what we saw with the Bills Chiefs. You wouldn't get that with the 49ers. It would be... A slow moving game, like waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen. Whereas with the Rams, if you get Rams Chiefs, oh, it's going to be offensive fireworks. If you mm-hmm. get wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Aren't you the person that just picked the 19 point scoring Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Chiefs? You, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> okay. I said, I was, what I was going to say was if you get Rams Bengals, I think you would also get a high scoring offensive shootout. I don't know. Aaron Donald and I, he would eat Burrow alive. I think that line against them is even scarier than Tennessee's for sure. Um, yeah. I, I think that that could be a very, very, very bad matchup for Burrow. Fair point. But either way, I think it would be a high scoring affair. So I don't want the 49ers in the Super Bowl for that reason. Yeah, I don't want the Bengals in for that same reason because, I mean, 19 points is not very impressive, especially when a rookie kicker is uh, the one who scored a majority of them. That doesn't exactly blow me out of the water in terms of out- offensive output. Fair I mean, point. Listen, we've had to watch a lot of games here in Cleveland where the most scoring uh, came from the kicker. Okay. Yeah. As much as I've loved Phil Dawson, I, I would love to see some more touchdowns. Yeah, same here. Same. Anyway, we need a kicker, though. That's the position we've been lo- haven't uh, figured out for like ten plus years. I mean, yeah, we need a kicker. Is it at the top of the priority list? Absolutely not. No, we've yeah, we've figured out this postseason how important they can be, but in terms of what holes like the Browns have right now, it's definitely not the most glaring. There are some other holes that are definitely more important to be filled at this moment. Quarterback. There you yeah, go. I mean, that's really you know. top of the list. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to this 49ers Rams game, I am concerned about the Rams going against the 49ers because Kyle Shanahan has Sean McVay's number. I think he's like five and zero or six and zero somewhere in that neighborhood. So 
that doesn't give me a lot of confidence in picking the Rams. So. Neither um, one of them are suiting up and playing quarterback. So, in my opinion, it doesn't have as much to say about it as as the numbers would indicate. You know, 5-0 and is obviously good, but I, I don't know how much of that is due to coaching alone. Let's put it that way. Sure. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that one. But still, I think it could be, even though, like you said, they're not suiting up, I still think it could be some type of factor. I mean, the Rams have definitely, you know, had moments and been inconsistent. And, you know, they've lost five games, you know, so like they're not, they're not infallible. I'm not saying that by any means. I just do not see the, the 49ers being able to score enough points. That's just yeah. flat out. Even, I, even if Stafford has a bad game, I, I think that they'll still probably score more points than the 49ers. Yeah. I will say this. If the Rams end up winning the Super Bowl, Stafford would probably – it's either going to be Stafford or Donald who wins Super Bowl MVP would be my guess. But – I would love it if Cooper Cup were to win Super Bowl MVP. Because I'm just a big fan of, like, skill position players. So, Well, unless he catches a, a touchdown pass from Odell Beckham Jr., uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Yep. well, let's also yeah. look at this. Like, nobody's talking about the game like Gabriel Davis had for uh, the Bulls. They're all talking about Josh Allen. And he yeah. had as big, as big of a game as you can have for a wide receiver. Four yeah, touchdown he, he, catches. That, he did something Jerry Rice never did in the playoff game. Let's be right. Right Yeah. And we're still only talking about Josh Allen. We didn't even mention his name in that segment. Yeah, yeah that's frustrating for me because, like, I guess I'll bring this up now. I, I was going to save this for the Super Bowl show, but whatever. I don't like that it's always the quarterbacks winning Super Bowl MVP and the regular season MVP. Like, you know, I – yeah, I get it. The quarterback's the one throwing the ball and handing it off. But, like, let's say Aaron Rodgers throws a pass to Devontae Adams that was intended for a 10-yard route, and Devontae turns it into a 35-yard play, for example. Like, Devontae is the one who made that play. So, like, that's just an example of what I'm really referring to. We get it. We just all disagree. Quarterback, yeah. quarterback's the most important position on the field. The name of the award is most valuable player, and the quarterback position inherently has the most value before you even put people plugged into these positions. So I think a few a running backs have gotten it. It's just it by nature, most valuable is going to go to quarterback just because yeah. of how much impact they have on the game. Sure. Yeah. So that's there's 31 MVPs that have been quarterbacks. Okay. Brady leading the way with five. Okay. Seven running backs, seven receivers, four linebackers, two defensive ends, two safeties, a corner, a defensive tackle, and the very surprising kick returner slash punt returner. Okay. Mm. Looking at recent history, we're not far removed from a skill position winning it. Okay. Julian Edelman won it a couple years ago. True. So, and and before that, uh, Super Bowl 50 was Von Miller. Uh, Super Bowl 48 was Malcolm Smith. True. So we're not always getting quarterbacks. It's most of the time quarterbacks. Yeah. That's what I mean. Most of the time it's quarterbacks. But that's just how it is. Yeah. That's how it's always going to be. That's yeah, the nature I, of the award. Yeah. So. It, 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 it's like in baseball, how you very rarely see a pitcher win MVP. It's very mm-hmm. special when they do, but they're not going to win it very often. Right. Yeah. I just I just think we don't – we value the cor- – quarterback a little too much and don't play enough value into the skill position play. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, Cleveland hasn't had a quarterback in 30 years and they've been a complete joke. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to value the quarterback position. Yeah, uh, I, I, I've watched so many teams just have good quarterbacks and streams of consistency, including the Packers who had two Hall of Fame quarterbacks and be good since uh, as far as I can remember. So, yep. The, the quarterback position matters. It really does. It's the most important position. And then there's like a gap between here and the sun of yeah. the next most important position. Let's even look at the Pittsburgh Steelers who haven't had a losing season in how long with Ben Roethlisberger. Even having, you know, uh, an above average quarterback for a sustainable period of time, it gives you a dramatic advantage over other teams. Like, right. Quarterback is just so important, you know. Yeah, I get that. So. I- 
trust me, I understand why the quarterback is always like the main guy. I just wish we would put more emphasis on the tight ends, the wide receivers, running backs. That's all. Well, you lead the way on that. Next time we talk about a game where a wide receiver had four touchdowns and over 200 yards, you should probably mention it. <laughs> and let's be real here. Uh, just to just to bring up quarterbacks' importance, Mr. Tom Brady, the GOAT, never had a losing season. Never had a 500 season. Mm-hmm. Okay? He never had a season where he was – his worst season was 9-7. and seven, Okay? 9-7. Mm-hmm. and seven. Every other season besides that, he had four more wins than losses. Incredible. Okay. Including 2008 when he played three snaps or whatever the hell it was. Right. Yeah. Try to find try to find similar numbers with any position player over that span of years. You know, it's just you, you won't. You'll see guys go on teams that are really good, then you'll just see their records fluctuate from year to year. Yep. I mean, Barry Sanders, one of the greatest players of all time. You know what their records were during those years? They weren't that good. Joe Thomas. They, and, and they only went to one conference championship throughout the Barry Sanders time. One yeah. conference championship well, appeared. Won one postseason game since like 1950-something, okay? And it was during very early in Barry Sanders' career. Yeah. I mean, Joe Thomas, a unanimous, you know, All-American throughout his entire career, you know. Mm-hmm. The most yeah. important yeah. on the offensive line, yeah, but nothing in comparison to the value of a quarterback. You know what I mean? Understood. I mean, what how, how many great pieces do we see out of Adrian Peterson and the Vikings just suck? Yeah, well, and that's why they have other awards too. You know, they have the offensive uh, player of the year and the defensive player of the year, you know, so that they try to, you know, yeah. emphasize like their importance in other areas. It's just, I think that the problem with MVP award is that word value. When you throw the yeah. word value in there, you know, that that changes the nature of the award inherently, whereas the other awards are mostly just based off of statistics and performance. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. We'll just have to agree to disagree on that one. That's what we're saying. Cool. Cool. Yes. But next. (laughs) Well, well, uh, we got some some coaching and uh, personnel moves in the NFL. Sean Payton is stepping away, not retiring at the moment. Stepping but he's away. stepping away from the Saints and their $70 million over the cap that they're going to be next year. No um, surprise here, huh? <clears throat> trade for Michael Thomas. Um, <clears throat> that's my uh, analysis here for the for Cleveland. But uh, Sean Payton had a very, very good, great career uh, with the Saints as a coach. Uh, obviously, the whole Bounty Gate scandal mm, uh, yeah. kind of mars his legacy a bit. Uh, I would say the only thing that Mars is like to see even more is that terrible movie with Kevin James coming out. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Which, for some reason, they decided that, you know, Doug Heffernan was the best person to cast as Sean Payton in a movie. Unbelievable. Uh, but really good coach, but uh, the Saints are fucked for yeah. the foreseeable future. They are. I don't They're know where they're really not right now. Uh, you know where Sean Payton's going next? The, the Bra- No. He's not going to the Cowboys. Yeah, he is. The Browns? He's not going to the Browns either. I'm nah, kidding. he's going to Dallas. I don't think so. As a, oh, as a defensive he ends up, But, like, it sounds like he's definitely taking a year off, though. So. He's at least taking a year off. It, you look at just, you know, how good the Saints have been for so long. Eventually, you just get burned out. Yeah. And you look at where the Saints are, they're they're not going to be good for a minute. No. Uh, the Taysom Hill experiment is, thank God, is going to come to a goddamn end because I'm so sick of Taysom Hill. People say it. he's a franchise quarterback. The dude's like as old as I am. Okay, right, right. Uh, let's be real here, and he's like a great gadget player. Great gadget player. He's not a quarterback. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. He's not. Uh, they they tried their their hand with Jameis Winston for a brief period this year, and that really didn't do much. It yeah. actually seems famous, like, famous, one of the greatest of all time. Couldn't uh, James one of one. <laughs> I mean, Jameis Winston was doing well before he got injured and his season was over. I like I mean, Jameis Winston, Winston wasn't going to be the answer to their offensive problems. Uh, and mm-hmm. also, they didn't have Michael Thomas at all this year either, but because he didn't play a single snap. But. <clears throat> They're going to have to move some contracts down in New Orleans. Okay? Yeah, they're going to have to move a lot of contracts. 
Yeah. I imagine Michael Thomas is one of them uh, yeah. because he's a wide receiver. He's going to be paid a lot of money. And again, just to repeat, I would love for Michael Thomas to end up in Cleveland. It's not just because he used to play for Ohio State. It's because he's a really good player. And I'm pretty sure there's a certain uh, – let's call it – Will we ruin him, him though? Will we ruin him? Okay, James, I did not hear anything you just said because uh... – you mean Turk? Yeah. Turk. Can you yeah. hear me? You yeah. hear me now, but it sounds like you're like in outer space or something. I don't know what's going on. Okay, now you're better. No, I was you- saying. I was saying. Do you think uh, the Browns would ruin Michael Thomas? No. With no. the wrong quarterback, like a certain quarterback who wears number six, yes. I don't think the Browns have ruined Michael Thomas. Look at the type of receiver he is. Uh, even when the Browns are running a pass heavy offense with Jarvis Landry, Jarvis Landry was still productive. Yeah. Uh, it, I love Jarvis Landry. I really do. Michael Thomas is like Jarvis Landry, who is like five more yards downfield. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that makes a difference. I do too. I would yeah. like that. I like that move a lot. Would too. Yeah. I would too. And then more coaching movement, Don South. We got uh, the Jaguars hiring Byron Leftwich. I really, I really like this hire. For the I did not it's even hear about, about this. They they hire Byron Leftwich. They're the former first round pick. Yeah, it looks like they're they're set to hire Byron Leftwich. Would uh, would David Garrard be the Would David Garrard be the assistant? Oh, hold on. This was uh, supposed to be a done deal yesterday. Let me double check here. Uh, do, 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 do. Anyone remembers David Garrard? I remember yes. David Garrard. Yeah. Yes, uh, I do uh, remember David Garrard for his game against the Pittsburgh Steelers back in 2007. Uh, it looks and like they're in contract negotiation. They haven't hired him officially yet, but everything's pointing in the direction of Byron Left, which going back to Jacksonville. Honestly, I, I think Byron Leftwich's potential hire in Jacksonville is probably all hinging on what Tom Brady does. Um, yeah, we know Tom yeah. Brady usually met with him by breaking into his house. So, oh, it, was his <laughs> house. it was his neighbor's house first. Then he went to then he went to Byron's house. Oh goodness! <laughs> uh, that was I heard about that. That story was hilarious. So Byron Leftwich closing in on being hired by the Jaguars. Uh, Anything's better than Urban Meyer, let's be honest here. Yeah, man, that could, <laughs> man, Nick Saban, Steve Spurrier, now Urban Meyer added to the list of the worst call the best college coaches to be the worst in the NFL. I mean it happens. Yeah, it happens a lot actually. There's a lot of college coaches that go to the NFL and aren't successful and vice versa too. There's a lot of guys that are successful in the NFL that have trouble in college. It's it's I mean funny how there was, this, you know make the there was some the only guy I could think of that was like good in both Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll was good in both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, who was the one clown that bailed on the Dolphins? Uh, I don't remember his name. Like uh, the Nick, and then went to Arkansas. Nick Saban? No, not him. No. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Then he ended up getting like the car accident with the neck brace? Yes. Are you, talking about, are you talking about the guy with the mustache? No, not not Dave Wanstead. I know exactly who you're talking about. I just can't remember his name. I can mm. picture. He was a he was a one and done. He bailed in the middle of a season. Uh, He's your coach now, isn't he? Arkansas, I mean. Uh, Cam Cameron. That's mm. right. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, he he coached for the Dolphins for a season, then left. Yeah, he's the coach of Arkansas now. I'm pretty sure. If I'm not mistaken, Jacks have a lot of cap space, don't they? Uh, let me uh, pull that I want to say they're one of the top five in available cap. So Jaguars as, are number two. Uh, there we go. So as bad as things have been in Jacksonville, they've got the number one pick, and they also have you know that going for them. Yeah, per over the cap, the Dolphins lead the way with seventy million in cap space. Uh, Jaguars got fifty nine, Bengals got fifty nine, Chargers fifty eight, Jets forty eight. Hmm. Uh, 
the only uh, team up there with any sort of dead money is the Jaguars with seventeen million in dead money uh, for next year. Is that because of Urban? Uh, the dead money, I believe, is for uh, contracts that they are no longer paying. So, looking at dead money. I'm trying to pull for that money figures. This website is not very helpful, but dead money is usually uh, of players that they had on their team but don't have on their team anymore um, that they're responsible for either way. Okay. So I'm trying to trying to find uh, their dead money uh, allocations uh, moving forward here. Uh, here we go. Uh, they're paying nine million to Joe Schobert, six point two to C.J. Henderson, uh, eight seventy five to Josh Lambeau, then a whole bunch of nobodies. But it's basically Maybe. Joe Schobert and C.J. Henderson, which are, are costing them fifteen million dollars next year. Gotcha. We should have kept Joe. We could have kept Joe Schobert. He would have been good now. Uh, I like Joe Schobert, but not for that dollar figure. Um, yeah, yeah, I not to, I, I think. I mean, I think we could have done something to make it work. Uh, he wanted that dollar figure. He got that dollar figure. Um, it, it, here's here's what I'll present to you. Uh, if the Browns kept Joe Schobert and paid him the amount of money that they did, there's a very unlikely possibility they draft JOK in the second round last year. So we would rather have Joe Schobert or JOK. I'll take JOK all day. Same. Yeah, I'll take JOK. Yeah, so would I. So that that's 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 the two things you got away here. It's not just oh he'd be great. It's what is he costing you if you pay him? Yep. Yeah, look at his way out of Cleveland, and that matter. Yeah, look at the situation at large, and that's that's what it is. But um, here, moving on to some definitive news here, uh, the Bears have a new GM, Ryan Poles, because uh, they decided to hire another guy named Ryan to be their GM. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> that's worked out so well before, and you know. Hiring guy from the Chiefs. That can't go wrong, right? You know, that's yeah, a, that's a totally great organization to hire from. You know, I can't think of anyone that they hired recently where it did completely flopped. Yeah, I can't think of anyone either. It, the, like, this the, is the, such a boring concept. Are we talking about the, the Bears hiring yeah. someone? Where uh, Bears, yeah, Ryan Poles is their new general manager. Um so they have him in town now. Now it's time for coaching searches. Uh, two guys that they brought in and are rumored to be options: Jim Caldwell, Dan Quinn. I think uh, I, those two would actually probably be good for the Bears. If you're looking for a guy on a scale of one to ten to to be a solid five, it's both of those guys. You're not going to be excited. You have a limited ceiling. Take Quinn over uh, Caldwell, though. I'd probably take Quinn over Caldwell too, because you uh, you look at Jim Caldwell and you take out the the Peyton Manning years, he has a losing record. Uh, I mean, yeah. although I have gotta give him credit where credit's due, he did take the Lions to the playoffs. But uh, that's that's the one thing that everyone keeps hammering the table when it comes to Jim Caldwell for. But that's his ceiling. That's as far as you're getting with him with yeah. not Peyton Manning is a first round playoff exit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he got. But- Unless you got a good quarterback, yeah, I agree. They had Matthew Stafford. They, they did. We had Matthew Stafford. In my opinion, like this Bears job, it should be one of the most desirable jobs in all of sports, and it's just not. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, it's a dysfunctional organization, is what it is. Uh, yeah. We're not too unfamiliar with this concept here, but the, that's what the Bears are. They're a dysfunctional organization. Hell, they don't even know where the hell they're going to be playing in a couple of years because they're still trying to move out to. Uh, move out of downtown Chicago for some stupid reason. They right. go to Arlington Heights. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was, uh, what it was, but Arlington Heights. But uh, you look at this, it's it should be a very appealing job. I mean, you look at the division. Aaron Rodgers has got uncertain future. The Lions are a disaster as per usual. Uh, the Vikings are going to be heading in a downward trajectory, and we'll get to them in a minute. But um, – the Vikings, you don't know what that it looks like. They're about to tear shit down to the studs. Mm-hmm. Yep. It looks like they're going through a transitional phase. So if you're looking for a team that has a young quarterback that's going to be on the rise, that's got some good pieces, the Bears seem like a good spot to go to. 
But the Bears being the Bears are going to listen to the, the names that the search committee that the NFL puts together suggests, which is always the same cast of characters, Jim Caldwell, Dan, Dan Quinn. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get uh, one of those other very unexciting names that's going to pop up on this list. That's going to be a Hugh Jackson. Uh, Hugh Jackson won't show up on this list, but uh, you'll, you'll get one of those guys that are just like, oh, Vance Joseph is going to be on here, or Steve Wilkes. Or um, Ken Wisenhunt, you know, just the very, just the the same cast of characters. Oh, we suggest these guys. Then they end up hiring him, and it ends up blowing up in their face. Dan, Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell wasn't on that list. He's just a complete psychopath. Then hey, he got them. Detroit like believing in him. So he's great for content, uh, coaching ability to be determined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great for yeah. content creation. I'll agree with you there. Yeah, I'll I agree. agree with you on that one. He's a pro wrestling character. He is. <laughs> awesome. And he's a he, he is a pro wrestling character. Yeah. He is. Especially if he grew back out his if he grew back out his hair even more so. Remember when he used to have the long hair back in the day? I, I do remember <laughs> when he used to have long hair back in the day. But Back to the Bears. I mean, does Caldwell or Quinn excite any of you guys if you're a Bears fan? No. Quinn, Quinn a little bit because that guy has been to a Super Bowl, so he has some experience. Do you know who the coordinator was uh, during that Super Bowl trip? Do you happen to know who that was? I didn't remember. It was 28, although who was maybe he learned. Huh? Who was his offensive coordinator? Do you remember? I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, well, he used to be here until he used a PowerPoint presentation, uh, presentation to get essentially let go out of his contract before he got hired by the Falcons, which he then parlayed into the current head coaching job of the San Francisco 49ers. I present to you Kyle Shanahan. Oh, Kyle and Shanahan? Kyle Shanahan is the offensive coordinator. So, hmm. yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you guys knew the, the PowerPoint presentation to get let out of his contract uh, little story there. But, yeah, that happened. Uh, but that's not on Quinn, then. That's not on Quinn. Huh? No, I'm just talking Quinn. about it's just a, it's a fun story, just to just to, yeah. to note. But yeah, uh, now Quinn could have overrid that. That is on Quinn. He did the PowerPoint presentation in Cleveland to get out of his contract with the Browns before he went oh, to yeah. Ohio. And um, also, um, he he why was, was he going to do with Johnny Manziel as his starting quarterback? Uh, That's why he wanted out. That's exactly why he wanted out. Exactly. Uh, Manziel was forced upon him, and he didn't want it. And Mm -hmm. he said, let me out of this contract. I don't want it. Yeah, if I was Kyle Shanahan, I would have done the same damn thing. My point being with Dan Quinn, when it comes down to how we got to the Super Bowl, it's because of Kyle Shanahan. Let's be real. Dan Quinn, fantastic defensive guy. We've done that. We've seen them do that in Seattle and now in Dallas. Okay. Great at defense. I don't think he's that coach. Yeah, I agree with you there. I defense would agree. Coordinator, sure. Yeah. But I'm you know, surprised the Cowboys haven't given him like a contract extension so he can't leave the building. Well, if you're going for a promotion in your job, they can't block you. And so if a promotion for him would be a head coach. Mm-hmm. So when he inevitably gets hired, because it seems like he's going to get hired, let's be honest, some team's going to hire Dan Quinn as their head coach oh, next year. Yeah, he'll he'll be, he'll land somewhere before the the beginning of next year for sure. The, the Cowboys are going to have to replace their defensive coordinator, and um, the recently released Don Wink Martindale seems like such a good fit for them. He really does. Mm. Why did the Ravens do that? Uh, he was in the final year of his contract going into next year. And I imagine there's probably a difference in philosophy that happened because they gave John Harbaugh more money and let yeah. uh, Don Martindale go. And mm-hmm. uh, the Ravens defense uh, took a noticeable downturn this year. They were like, I think, ranked 25th or something overall. They yeah, really- that was not the team's identity by any means. And it has been for decades now. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you just need a refresh. You need a new voice in the room. And yeah. he's been there for a minute. So yeah. sometimes you just need to change, change the guy – making or communicating the message to get a better and more impactful performance. And I think that's what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Getting to the Vikings, though, they hire the Browns person. Yep. Uh, Quezzi Adolfo Mensa hired by Minnesota Vikings as their new general manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the vice president of football operations here in Cleveland. 
And because the Vikings hired him, the Browns will get a third round pick this year and one next year. And the dots are starting to connect. Everything's falling into place for a carbon copy trade that we saw last year between the Rams and Lions, which could send Kirk Cousins to Cleveland. Which is what you were trying to explain to me in that text string. And for some reason, I just didn't clue in right away. You, you think this is the, the leap we need to make for a Super Bowl? It's not a Super Bowl leap. It's about, uh, it's about doing a couple things. Uh, one – Properly identifying the skill and talent of your skill position players. Because there are a lot of guys we don't know anything about because the quarterback play has, has suffered. Uh, uh, just a little tip, jerk. Don't do that in front of your camera again because it did not look like uh, your face was there. It looked like your ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just going to just gonna be that. But there's also questions of whether or not Kevin Stefanski's offense is really effective or not. Yeah. Uh, it's been limited by Baker and I think you'll get a lot of answers with a more stable presence at quarterback about what's holding the offense back. Is it the play calling? Is it the scheme or is it the quarterback? And we know Kirk Cousins is a more stable quarterback than Baker Mayfield is. Yes. Um, So you get a, a better level of consistency in that point. And it's really about having a succession plan right now. There isn't one. Uh, the reason they signed Case Keenum a couple years ago was just in case Baker flamed out in 2020 and they could just go to Case Keenum with this year being the year they draft or acquire somebody else. Right. Yeah, I'm okay with this move as a short-term solution. I think it's a good move for a short-term solution. But Long-term, Kirk, though. He's old. Kirk Cousins isn't going to lead the Browns to a culture change or a Super Bowl or anything like that. So I'm not crazy excited by this move, but it is progress. Um, and I think it's a good placeholder while we do try to figure the position out a little more, whether that's uh, through the draft or, or, you know, whether there's other routes down the road that they may be interested in. Um, but yeah, you got to do something because we cannot start Baker May- We cannot start Baker Mayfield on week one this season. We can't. Yeah. Uh, they need stability. They, I think Cousins would provide stability. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think he's in the top tier of the the group of quarterbacks that include Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff and Jimmy Garoppolo and Derek Carr. I I, I think Cousins is better than Carr, but not by much. Um, We don't get to see any more progressive commercials anymore. Oh, (laughs) boo-hoo. How terrible. Oh, no. Cry me a river. Do you miss them them doing those and then losing and then have to put in on a bad performance? No. I can tell you, those commercials – I don't care either way for those commercials, but they're a hell of a lot more annoying when the Browns get embarrassed on Sunday. Then you got to watch the afternoon game and the Sunday night game, and you got to watch the the at home with Baker Mayfield commercial. Yeah, it, it, it just like shoving it down. It's like when Hugh Jackson did the Mister Hero thing. It was annoying, and he, like you cannot win a game, but you make this commercial about a sub. Let me just tell you, I'm, I'm so glad I, I I missed most of the Hugh Jackson era of living in town. Okay, and I didn't have cable until uh, Hugh Jackson was fired. Uh, until after that, so I'm so glad I missed that that era of commercials. Okay? They were bad. I, 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 I've seen them like on Twitter and YouTube and stuff, so I'm not like completely unfamiliar with them. But not having them just you know thrown in my face every commercial break, pretty happy about that. Uh, I prefer the Baker Mayfield commercials over the Spitzer Shield Shuffle commercials <laughs> ten times out of ten. Oh um, yeah. I'm, I, I don't want to see Baker be the starting quarterback next season, but I would gladly watch that commercial in perpetuity over top of watching that one with uh, with uh, Batonio and Jack Conklin one more time. Yeah. I would rather have Peregrine Falcons eat my eyeballs out <laughs> than watch Damn. that commercial one more time. I, I mean, do. Neither they made another one, and then the, the new one is worse than the old one, and it's just like, oh, goodness. How is that even possible? It's, really it's bad. bad. It's yeah. bad. As it's if the bar it. wasn't low enough, they made it lower. Yeah, I almost wonder if they're kind of trolling at this point. Like, they knew how bad it was, so now they're just like, let's just keep going with it. Like, it's kind of funny. but I mean, we're talking about it, so that's mission accomplished. That's true. You know, how, much, how many podcasts are talking about a car dealership right now? You know, we are, so. Yeah. My bad. I digress. Let's get back on track here. No, Baker, I've heard it in 92.3 they talked about the Baker thing a lot. What Baker thing? 
Oh, I thought you were talking about. Never mind. Moved on to a different topic. I, we're about to we're moving on to that topic. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. So you're right on point today. Good job, Chirk. Ninety-two-three did talk about the Baker car commercials all the time. Okay, well, we are we are talking now about Baker quitting social media, or at least taking a a break a from posting on social media. James, you a just talked health- about this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the situation? Oh, so uh, he decided to post on Instagram uh, yesterday that he's taking a break from social media. He's going to go get himself right and all this other crap. And I'm just like, you could have done it without posting. You could have just took a break. And just do it. And we wouldn't have cared. It's like that meme. We don't need you to announce your departure. Just go. Like no, exactly. If what you need is really a break and what this is about is like mental health and blah, blah, blah. Then cut it yeah. off, take a break, and and you know what I mean. But this is yeah. this is not just that say, him just being no. a really petulant brat. Yeah, sounds like he, just nar- narcissistic. How he just like said that. He's it pretty much feels like he's saying, "Yeah, I don't care what any of you say. I know I'm a superstar. Like, go away. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like show some humble, show some humility, think, humility." Humility. Humility. Like, recognize, like, hey, I'm not that good. I have some stuff I need to work on. Yeah, he's delusional. Nobody thinks Baker's better than Baker thinks he is. He is uh, a classic case of Dunning-Kruger syndrome, okay? Yeah, yeah. He is 100 could be translated to the world of athletics, he is. It's a Baker Mayfield, okay? Yeah. But, but looking at this, what this was is I'm going to announce – I'm taking a break from social media. Just, but I want attention one last time before I do. Right. Hey, that's, that's, what that's what I'm first saying. Not you. I want to be at the top of the conversation on radio for an entire day. Again, mm-hmm. we're doing something stupid on social media. Again. Again, like the passive aggressive liking of a tweet from Dustin Fox the other day. Right. Which, I'm sorry. He was speaking the truth. We right. don't have a quarterback good enough uh, to compete with what we saw from the Chiefs and Bills. And he no, doesn't have the rest of life, and everyone's just like, ooh, I ride with six. Okay. Too many people are busy riding with six. Emily's gotta wait. Okay? I'm starting to wonder if he even wants to be to be here, period, because like so, he is just self-sabotaging and making his situation so much worse. He's just he won't put the shovel down. Every so, day yeah. he makes the situation worse by like doing one of the you know, by acting this way. It's just like dude, just stop digging. So, just, so he oh, he's self deprecating himself as well. He's on a self-destructive path, in my opinion, with the media. Like that, there's no way out of. He's choosing a route with the media right now that, like, he's gonna regret later down the line. Because, like, when you're not performing well, you need as many friends on your side as you can get. And the media is not gonna be apologizing for Baker Mayfield anytime soon after the way that he's lashed out at them. So yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you, saw him, you saw him do that quote tweet on Mary Kay Cabot like a month ago. Yeah, you know, trying to call bullshit. And it's just like. Uh, you know what people calling bullshits you and quarterbacks of years past. Um, yeah. And I'm and sorry, they're want. not the people you want in your corner. Right. And say what you want about her, her writing or anything, you, you know, like that's just not the way to go about doing that professionally. Like there's, you don't do that. You don't like, I, I had a really big problem with the way that he attacked her, even though I don't particularly like her, or her takes. Mm-hmm. It just was like that, like you don't do that. You just don't, I, I don't know. I, Unless she went like low and like was talking about like family or character or something like that, but no, she was strictly talking about talent in this case, Ch- and, changing like a narrative that's not the reality. Yeah. And, and like the only sh- thing she was doing was quoting Baker in his own words and his own actions, you know. And he took that as like, oh, well, she's attacking me. Like, no, you did this yourself, bro. Yeah, like, I think it's also like throughout the season when. He knew he had all these various injuries, whether it was the torn labrum or X, Y, and Z. And he still, yeah. tried, he still tried to take on this whole tough guy persona and, like, I'm still going to go out there and play anyway. And, like, he shot himself in the foot. We could have had a different conversation. If Keenum was playing, he probably could have led us to the playoffs, and then we could have been like, oh, Baker, Baker's back. I, I would rather have that conversation. Well, I don't know if Keenum leads us to the playoffs, but I'm 100% sure that Case Keenum could have gave us the same performance and record that Baker Mayfield did. And yeah. Case Keenum wouldn't have been injured doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then Baker would have a different narrative and he could, and he would still 
like people would st- it would still be mysterious of what ba- what you're going to get with Baker at that point. Baker cost himself hundreds of millions of dollars by playing this season. He should have got the surgery after week two and been like, okay, I'm going to identify that I got to be right for next year. But by this season and this performance and then all of his actions on social media. That's what I mean. He's losing so much money with his actions. It's just incredible. Like, Yeah, he is. I mean, cool. You got the progressive commercials. I got bad news. Uh, he wouldn't have those commercials if he didn't play here. Right. Uh, but you say ba- Baker is a Mayfield, okay? The only it's reason Baker. why Baker Mayfield has that contract and has that advertising thing is because progressive is in Northeast Ohio. Yeah. If he what do you label Ohio, him as? No deal. He played in what? Texas. No deal. No. Do you say he's a diva? A diva? Yes. I don't know if he's a diva. I just think he's someone who's I, I a think, and doesn't I'll understand. I'll put him in that people. category. He's getting there. Oh, generally, divas actually have to be good. So this he's not a diva. So <laughs> if you, you look at divas uh, traditionally. I mean, uh, Odell has that tag, and I don't think that's necessarily fair. But, you know, you think Terrell Owens, Chad Johnson, uh, Keyshawn Johnson, that, that group of guys. Those yeah. are the guys that typically get tagged with diva, but – they were. I would say Baker's a quarterback, Diva. I don't know about that. Man, Johnny Manziel was. He wasn't a Diva either because he wasn't good either. I think yeah, he's, he's not good enough to be a Diva. Yeah. Uh, not, to be a yeah. Diva, you have to be good, you said? Yeah, yeah. he doesn't call Diva. He was arrogant. Yeah. He was just an arrogant bitch. <laughs> well, that's a good way to put it. I it, like it, that. it is. My, I mean, my main problem with him is that he's out there, he's saying a whole bunch of shit, he's doing the passive aggressive likes, he's getting. We've seen his patterns in the past. He's battled with fucking Colin Coward on on the internet and his show. You've seen him engage with people and say stupid shit and try and take this, you know, moral high road. Like, no, you're down here with everybody else, buddy. Okay? Yeah. Don't pretend you're better than everyone. The, you can't just go and say shit, then have the thin skin and just walk away and be like, I'm going to cower away now. Right. Okay. And, and one more thing. Let's not pretend he's actually taking a break from social media because he's not he's still going to be looking at twitter and not interacting or yeah he didn't delete his accounts or make them private or anything yeah he's going to be looking at instagram or snapchat or whatever he's using he's he's probably going to be using burner accounts okay Okay. we've seen athletes do it before i mean better athletes but we've seen them do it before Mm -hmm. kevin durant perfect example yeah i know we got some smart viewers anybody who's into that sort of thing like Go find his burner account. I would love to get my hands on Baker's burner account. How, I mean, how, many, do you think he, how, how many Finstas do you think he has? A minimum of two. I would say he has a minimum of two burners. Yeah, two I would Finstas? say minimum two. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, yeah, I'm probably with you there. Probably one one for Instagram, one for Twitter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. You, you look at uh, you really want to find his burner account. Just go find any uh, account that's you know vehemently you know uh, defending him. That's true. Anyone defending his play on the field is a burner. Uh, you can just assume it is, especially when yeah. they got some stupid name like Goated Baker or Mayfield's Awesome or uh, uh, Baker for MVP on any of those stupid accounts that have Baker Mayfield as their profile picture, mm-hmm. but it's obviously not him. Right. Yeah. You can find any one of those. Just go look at the mentions of anyone that's criticized Baker over the last couple of days. You know, I've retweeted a couple of those people. Some fun interactions. Go, go peruse. Yeah, so, yeah some of the interactions you had, interaction. they were quite entertaining. I, mm-hmm. although I, I respectfully chose not to say anything because I'm like, nope, I'm not getting involved in this. I'm just gonna watch. That was fun. Yeah, but Baker's just not good. He shouldn't have been the number one overall pick. The only reason he won the Heisman Trophy is because he was in Lincoln Riley's system at Oklahoma, and he had really good receivers around him. Plain and simple as that. Go away, Baker. I yeah, don't think you have to go that far. I just think you can just say Big 12 and period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you remember this? You think uh, that – so that season he had last season was a fluke? Yes. I mean, it wasn't even a full season of being good. It was half a season. We've seen yeah. him play half a season good before. Right. 2018. A lot of guys can play a good half of a season. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. Exactly. It means Cam nothing. Newton. He he's one of those guys that like he, 
he'd come out and you're like, oh, MVP Cam is back, you know, and then the next game he goes out and lays an egg and then he doesn't look the same. And like every year he gets off to like, they'll have half of a good year and the other half is just an abomination. I mean, in college football, they call that the September Heisman. I mean, that, yeah, that, trophy, exactly. that trophy resided in Ann Arbor for a very long time. Uh, you had to go there, but you're right. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I had to. You're right. right. Bernard Robinson won, what was that, four uh, September uh, Four straight. Four yeah, yeah. Straight. And, and, uh, who was the guy after him? I forget who it was. Uh, oh, uh, like, you mean <laughs> – oh, oh, oh. Uh, he wore like oh, a, Devin Gardner. Devin Gardner. He wore like ninety something that one. Ninety eight. He wore ninety eight. Yes, ninety eight. I remember that. I remember that guy. That was yeah. after Tom Harmon. He was our first Heisman Trophy winner. He wore ninety eight. It was the anniversary of his Heisman season, so it was like an homage to him. Yeah, he was top for Heisman. Yeah, but yeah. he he was garbage. Gar- yeah. He was. Hey, Fortune won one, one too. That's that's another name to. Oh yeah. Oh oh oh, oh no. Mm. Uh, yeah. So. Not to not to throw shit on Michigan, but uh, you're not I, wrong. You're not wrong about it. I lived in southeastern Michigan during those years, so just that's what I remember. So yeah, bad, bad, bad. Yeah, lots of bad. Uh, let's let's move on here. Uh, baseball Hall of Fame screwing it up again. Oh my god! They they didn't put Barry. Are you talking about the, them not putting Barry Bonds in? The only uh, the only one new member of the baseball hall. It's David Ortiz. Uh, I love David Ortiz. Big Poppy, great designated hitter. Possibly if arguably the best designated hitter of all time. Um, I have no problem with him making the Hall of Fame. Same. My problem is not Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens. Same here. See, I mean, you don't think Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds should get in? If it's because of steroids, Ortiz had steroid allegations in 2003. I think the 90s was like the steroid era. I think it it was like different. I'm so torn with Roger Clemens and – Barry Bonds. And here's why. Because, James, you told me this, and I've looked into the numbers. Before they, like, took steroids, both of their numbers were Hall of Fame numbers. You could Allegedly. See- let's, be, let's be honest here. Allegedly. Because they've, okay. never, they've never tested positive. Okay. Right. Fair enough. Before they both allegedly took steroids, they were having Hall of Fame careers. I'll mm-hmm. A hundred percent. But the moment it came to the light that they allegedly took steroids, for me, that is cheating. And because of that, you are no longer allowed to be in the Hall of Fame. So I, it sucks because, again, I want them to be in the Hall of Fame because of their numbers. But for me, once you cheat, no go. All right, so Josh, I'm going to ask you a question. A lot about it was an era. era. So, Josh, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, do you know what greenies are? No, I don't. Okay, so greenies, which is just basically a, a fun way of saying amphetamines, very popular in the sport in the 70s and 80s. And I can tell you, anyone who got in the Baseball Hall of Fame during that played during that era was taking a drug and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's always so, that's the other thing with baseball. There's a very good chance that they took greenies. Okay. Mm-hmm. And guys talk about it in like the good old days. Uh, you know, oh, the days we just you know, took some greenies, went out there. It's, that's like we're gonna celebrate those guys, but right. we're gonna we're gonna keep these other guys out, like Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, where they're or you know, Barry Bonds has no definitive positive test. You're gonna keep him out because it's just old baseball writers being like, er. A lot of it's that, I mean, let's be real. A lot of it was that Barry Bonds is a black athlete who didn't treat the media the way that they wanted to be treated. That's, that's what it is. That's it, what they, it is. they didn't want, so basically, they, yeah, if you didn't want to, they want to suck up. As the a black athlete, they expected him to behave in a certain way, and he didn't. And because of that, they held that against him. And before the steroid allegations ever were around, they were, they've always been looking out to get Barry Bonds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always been guys that did not like Barry and had it out for his character. And my thing is, is every era of baseball, there is cheating of some kind. And as a lifelong baseball player, like part of the game is trying to get an edge on your opponent. Part of the game is trying to steal signs. Part of the game, like you're always, always, always looking for the, any kind of way you can get a leg up on your opponent. That's part of the game. It, it, it's not just baseball or, either. 
So it's like if you, if you want to keep one person out for cheating, you can't put anybody in because everybody played in an era where cheating was involved in some way or the other. And I guarantee you they took part in some way, whether it was it, stealing signs or whatever it may be. There's just so many different ways in, that you it, can. It would like be saying like not letting any NBA players in the Hall of Fame in the 80s because it was a cocaine era. Yeah, it's like you you just got to you got to separate the two. You got to separate what happens on the field with or like NFL NFL too. stuff. It's like it, it happens in every sport, in every era. There's always something like this that, you know, I don't know. It's just like, if you're going to keep one out, keep them all out. That's it. So yeah. Like, I understand. You're let Ortiz in. He's been accused of the same thing that Bonds has been accused of. So, I, I, I mean, this is just them. Go ahead. My bad. Well, Ortiz has a, a, a positive test, which he uh, is – which was not admissible at the time. This took place right. in 2003, I believe. Yeah, there's if, there's a loophole, and in, in if it would have happened in, like, today's game, it would have been a different situation. would have been different. Or what happened, like, I think, like, just a couple of years later, it would have been entirely different. Yeah. He would have, he would have you know, the, the stigma that uh, Barry Bonds has or even some of the, the newer guys that get popped all the time. And, you know, the one thing that always comes – Back to me when I think about guys who take performance enhancing drugs, it's it doesn't make you a better baseball player. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, because you still have to make contact with the ball. Okay. Yeah. It, it, if you swing and miss and you're taking steroids, congratulations. You're you're wasting your time and you're terrible. I mean, yeah. that's that's two things. Uh, Just got muscular for nothing. Monte. He played for Cleveland back in a couple of years ago. He got popped for steroids multiple times. Mm-hmm. He sucked. Okay. Yeah. The Mets are dealing with the corpse of Robinson Cano who can't step test and testing positive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's guys all over the place that, that are always on the juice and they, they never put up numbers like, like bonds. And there's a lot of pitchers that have done all sorts of things and they've never put up numbers like Clemens. And, yeah. and in terms of Ortiz, like, like I said, I have no problem with him getting in. In my opinion, he's 100% a hall of famer, but mm-hmm. there is more definitive evidence that Ortiz has cheated than either of the other two guys. Yeah. So yeah. what are we doing here is my point. You know? Yeah, so you feel like there's like a blurred, like a gray area. Double stand, uh, yeah. I, double I, stand. I also, I also want to point out. He was a media board. So. Yeah, I get what, Brian, I do, Brian and James, I do hear your points. Don't totally disagree with you. I just, I can't do it. I just can't. Also, I want to point out something. What do you think the lifestyle was like going on those buses or the planes? Yeah, I like mean, the travel? Know, character issues and things like that. You know, there's all you can go down any yeah. kind of you know road. Yeah. With people and- this is why it's so tough for me because, as I said to start this, like if you look at the numbers before they both allegedly took the steroids or took part in any of that, they were great. It seemed like Clemens was on track to get in the Hall of Fame on his own merits. It looked mm-hmm. like Bonds was going to get on into the Hall of Fame on his own merits. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's, just, look, look, let's look at the reality here. Barry Bonds is, like, the best baseball player of the past, like, what, 60 years? And you're going to keep him out? Yeah. The Hall of Fame. The, the Hall of Fame is supposed to be telling you the story of baseball. Can you tell the story of baseball without Barry Bonds? You cannot. Yeah. If you want to add a little, if you want to add a little like thing at the bottom of his Hall of Fame plaque, may or may not have used performance enhancing drugs, go right ahead. But you right. cannot tell the story of baseball without Barry Bonds. I, I will mean, give you that. One. On, on some other version of the committee, was like today's committee or the veterans, whatever. They'll get in one way or the other. But it's, what this is is just the baseball writers being like, I stood up for what I think is right because I'm 70 years old and I'm an old bitch. That's all this is. And yeah. as a guy who lives through the, uh, the Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa home run race, let me just tell you right now, that was one of my favorite years of any sport, any season that there's ever been. Absolutely electric, incredible. Mm-hmm. I was so – everybody in the country was so juiced about baseball, no pun intended. But, I know. Pun intended. Um, it, it was just like it, the game was finally like it was about yeah. to turn the corner yeah. and become, you know, America's game again. And then all of a sudden it's like we 
I don't know. It's just self-destructed, you know, and it's like I, I just hate to see it because I'm a huge diehard baseball fanatic, you know. I, yeah. I hate to see the game struggle, and part of the reason the game is struggling is because old whites that vote for the Hall of Fame. That's exactly what it is. And, and yeah. I, I mean, Brian, I'm going to ask you because we're both old enough to remember the era of Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, home run chase. Yeah. Do you remember any time since then that baseball was talked about across the board? Not because every I, night. Every night on Sports Center was the. It, it was started off with McGuire. You know I would encounter on a daily basis who could give two shits about baseball, do yeah. not know anyone besides those two were talking about baseball. Yeah, I mean, people that have never watched the game, they're, you're at the gas station and people, oh my God, can you believe that, you know, he's three away from Babe Ruth and then it was, he's one away from Maris. And it's just like the whole thing was just such a wild, awesome yeah. ride. And like, just as a fan who lived it and experienced that, it's like to think that they want to bury that era completely and not tell that story and, and just leave all of these people out. It just, to me, it doesn't make any sense because like, regardless of what they did and whether you agree it was right or wrong, like the game was at its best at that time. It, it has never been more popular and more relevant in, in American culture than it was when all those guys were juicing and hitting the ball out of the park. Yeah, that I understand that. Like, sure, I didn't get to appreciate, appreciate and enjoy the Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa race like you two did. I, I wish I could have because I watched the – the 30 for 30 film about it. Mm -hmm. And I per really enjoyed that. Like it was fascinating to hear like the whole story and watching like what you guys were saying, like the country was like, Oh my God, he's bit five home runs away or whatnot. So that's why this, this issue is like hard for me. Cause on one side, I'm like, no, they cheated. So keep them out. But at the same time, I totally hear what you're saying. Like, you can't mm -hmm. have them, you can't leave them out because they're part of the baseball story. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm a little more, lean a little more towards the keep them out, but I'm not like definitively in that camp. I mean, all I'm going to say to this is that. I want everyone to keep the same energy about cheating and keeping cheaters out when it's time for everyone from the Astros from a couple years ago when they're mm -hmm. eligible. Oh, I, I will. Talk about Jose Altuve. Mm -hmm. It's time to talk about Justin Verlander. Mm -hmm. Everyone that won that World Series, I want to hear the exact same argument of you can't let cheaters in because okay. guess what? It's not going to come up. You're nope. not your shit about it. Nope. It's unfortunate, but it's 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 part of the reason that baseball is lagging behind other sports in this country in terms of cultural re relevance, is that they they refuse to acknowledge that the culture has changed, yep. and that they have been left in the dust. Yep. Both and baseball there, and hockey have been left in the dust, as you as you both so eloquently explained to me the other night. I mean, let's let's be real here. Uh, baseball is currently in a lockout. That's not going to end anytime soon. No, yep. it's not. So to, to to quote, pardon my take, way to stay relevant baseball. Yeah, way to stay relevant baseball. You get a golf clap. Not you, James, just the overall thing. Yeah. Well, I think we're at our last order of business here. We've got uh, injury with Paul George. Uh, we, oh, James, I see you have torn ACL. Uh, it uh, says uh, he could be out for season for having surgery on a torn ACL, uh, mulling his options. Mm. But the Clippers seem to be down bad right now. Well, if yeah, the Clippers down bad. Well, if the Clippers weren't fucked already without Kawhi, now they are. I yep. mean, whatever dose of playoff P was going to give them anyways isn't going to help them. I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fluke run to the Western Conference Finals last year anyway. Cause I, I, I kind of disagree with you on that one. Let's see. Who did they play in the first round last year? Uh, no, it wasn't Denver. I forget who it was. L.A.? Oh, probably. Dallas. That's right, Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then in the second round, they got Utah. Yeah, uh, I think it, I, I think they I – think, I thought that was legit. I thought PG is a Hall of Famer, James. Oh, my God. Jesus. No. I am not entertaining this. Um, no. Yep. Come on, man. How about his all-star and all-NBA teams? You got uh, like the Clippers needed seven games to beat Dallas. They needed six to beat Utah. 
uh, and then they lost uh, to the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. If you need seven to lose to Dallas, nah. Man, also at the end of the day, these are Hall of Fame standards, not our standards. Just to let you know. We're just talking about – It goes up to you now. everybody being in the Hall of Fame. I know I'm contradicting <laughs> the previous no, every, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put. I wouldn't put everybody in the Hall of Fame. Timothy Mozgov wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. I you would find a bigger stat to put him in for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Trick, you would find some way to put no, him in. No, I wouldn't. I, I don't think Paul George is a Hall of Famer. I'm sorry. He, he hasn't oh, no. done enough. I can see that. I can get that. He has not done enough. I'm sorry. He's, in my opinion, he's never been a top five player in the NBA. And really, if, and and if you, I never, disagree. If you've never been top five, you're not a Hall of Famer in my eyes. I mean, I can. And you guys' can, standards are harsh. I'm sorry. Uh, it's the Hall of Fame. His career, the Hall of Fame. It's not the Hall of Average or the Hall of Great. But the Hall of Now. Paul George is a superstar. He's not a superstar. He's a star. There's a difference. He. he stars stars making in the Hall of Fame. What? Stars making in the Hall of Fame. Stars. stars do, but they have a better list of career accolades than they do than Paul George does. Yes. Okay. So, has and, Paul George ever made it to the NBA Finals? No. Has he ever won? You don't have to make it to the NBA Finals to go in the Hall of Fame. You don't. That's fair. But we're, we're looking at his, looking at what he's done, looking at has he ever been a top play, five player in his career? No. Uh, let's be yes, honest. In, in, uh, I would say twenty third, like probably like uh, third, like twenty twelve to twenty like fourteen time frame. I would put him up there. So like the same range that LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, Kevin yeah. I'll, I'll, put him, I'll put him. I'll put him in there at that point in time. No, no, Crazy. no. And, and, and that time he was in Oklahoma. At that time he was in Oklahoma City. For that season, I think he he was top five for that like 2018 season. Oh, well, I'm glad you mentioned Oklahoma City. I almost forgot James Harden. James Harden will round up that top five I just mentioned. Yep. Yes. Um. Not yeah. he was in Houston. Giannis beats him. Giannis is also ahead of him. Yes. I, I I'm not disagreeing with that. Giannis I'm just saying I think I think Paul George is just a Hall of Famer. That's all. I'm, I, 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 I I'm not saying he's the best player ever. I'm not saying he's like. And, and, heck, I'll even say he, I don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, but I think he's a Hall of Famer nonetheless. No. No. You think Colin Sexton's a Hall of Famer? No. No? Okay, cool. I, 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 I'm, so, I'm realistic on my Hall of Famers. Are you? You're way too generous on Hall of Famers. Yeah. So what do we think about the potential of Sexton returning in the postseason if the Cavs do indeed make it to the postseason? No. If he's willing, no. to, if he's willing to come off the bench, it could work. But if he's if he comes back from injury and says no, I want to go back in the starting lineup. Bad right. idea. Well, I, I, think I, I think we're putting the cart before the horse just a little bit here because one, it's possibly return if they make the playoffs. Yeah. So there's, well, there's there's two potential ways for the, neither one to happen. Right. Yeah, they, I, I think they will make the playoffs. They're probably going to be somewhere between the fourth and sixth seed. And yeah. There's also the, the third option of is Colin Sexton still on this team by that moment in time? Hopefully, a big fat no. Yeah, I I, I would much prefer are, him are to valuing his contract. Teams value his contract much more than the contract of Ricky Rubio. Okay. I mean, I think realistically, if you were to get traded, it would have it would probably be in the off season. So why not now? That you can't trade him in the off season. It's gonna be a free agent. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to trade him now. Wait, you got to trade right. him. You want to get anything? From him. To get anything, Hopefully. you got to do it this season. Yep. Uh, Who do you think we could get? Not do you think we could get like a good, decent shooting guard? You'd probably get like a backup shooting guard for him. Yeah. I don't know. Like, just someone who, like, I, I mean, we just need a shooting guard. Just someone who, like, a role player shooting guard is all we need to make this That's team all? good. Uh, no. no. More than just that. That's a different story. Um, yeah. The, the Let's try not. Right. Look, look Kirk, I'm as big of a cap fan as anyone, and even I have to say, we're not just a shooting guard away from being a title contender. I think we are. No, 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 I, I, I see, I see, oh, four Pistons on this team. 
Are you crazy? Are you? I, I, that's who I compare this team to. No superstar. I love it. We don't have a Chauncey Billups. We do not have a Richard Hamilton. We do not. All right. We we got our we got our Chauncey and Darius Garland. We got oh. our uh, we got our Tayshawn Prince and Isaac Okoro. We got our Ben Wallace and Jared Allen. And we who got our I don't know who our receiver was. Wallace. Uh, uh, not not who, Laurie Mark. Where, where wait, is this is guy on, on this version of the cast? Where's this guy? Yes. Wait, oh. Let me see. Who's that? Where's where is where is Sheed? Okay. Mm. There is no Sheed on this team. There is I mean, no Ben Wallace on this team. There is I mean, no Tayshawn Prince on this team. There's no Isaac Okoro. Isaac Okoro is the closest thing. He's just and Tayshawn Prince is the least it. important member of that starting five. Yeah. No, I I am a big oh, defensive oh, person, man. I no, I, I, no. I think defense is very underrated in, in this no, league. You just people said don't, no. people sleep on it. You said no he can score ten defense points defense a game. Defense. You said no to something that's a defensive fact. Tayshawn Prince was the least important member of that starting five. I just dis- oh of the starting five. Yeah, the least important. Yeah. I don't. Th- I mean, I think he serves his purpose of what it needs: defense. And that's, the, and that's, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I said least important member of that starting five was Tayshawn Prince. Yeah, it was Antonio McDice. He wasn't the starter. He wasn't even yeah, on the bench. He was on the bench. He wasn't even on uh, that roster. He wasn't even on oh, that. Oh yeah, you're team. right. <laughs> uh, you, he was part of that era. Was me about that that Pistons team? I went to those games all the time and watched them all the time, my friend. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was later. That was later in the run. They got Antonio McDice. Two years right. later after Ben Wallace left. But yeah, anyway. I would agree with. You. Okay, James, I would agree with you that Tayshawn Prince, although he was good defensively, yeah, I would agree he was the least valuable of that starting five. He was. He was. Then you look at the backup guys on that team. Where's Mike James? Do we have Mike James? Do we have? We got a. We got a. We got we Goodwin. We do not have a Mehmet Okur on this roster. No, we don't. We got we got uh, Kevin Love. Yeah. We do have Kevin Love. You know what? That's probably the only thing that's possibly matches is Kevin Love is Mehmet Okur. The only difference is that uh, Kevin Love is about <laughs> 10 years older than he was. Yeah, we, right. Isaac Okoro is no Rip Hamilton. We don't have a shooting guard. No. We don't have one. No. Okay. Chauncey Bill. Isaac, or I'm sorry, Darius Garland is no Chauncey Billups. Uh-uh. I love Darius Garland. He's Dar- You're right. Thank you. He's unique. He's he's Darius Garland. I, I take everything I did said back. This is the similar team to the Pistons. This is they're a unique not, team that's going to win the final. They're not at all close. You're unbelievable, sir. Big you game are tonight. unbelievable. Big game tonight. Cavs four-point underdogs at home against the Bucks. Uh, a win would put us a half game ahead of Milwaukee. Uh, yes, game, it, if we win this game, I think this. Do you think the Cavs just had an easy schedule this season? What are your takes on that? An easy schedule? No. Yes. I don't. No. I don't know about easy schedule. I will say that they've been able to take advantage of playing a lot of teams that have not had the full complement of star players or starters on their team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like we that saw a week ago when they beat the Nets. Like when we saw when they beat the Bucks earlier this season. We've seen them play a lot of teams where you, you they don't have their full complement of guys, and that's yeah. I think made a difference. Sure, yeah. I'll give you that. But like even with the Nets, yeah, they were without Durant for that game, but they still had Harden and they still had Irving. That's a formidable pairing. They're good. They're not Kevin Durant. That tr- that part is true. Like what? Uh, if you don't want to call him the best, like the number two best player in the league. No, nah, I would say yeah. he is the best. Yeah. I said if you don't want to call him the best. Then uh, the well, I know, but I'm saying, in my opinion, he is the best. So they don't have the best player in the game? That that matters. That matters. You know I mean? yeah. Yeah, that they, is they, matters. The Bucks, they had none of their regular starters. We played the Bulls not too long ago, and they didn't have Lonzo Ball. Okay? Yeah, that's true. So, um, like, that matters. There's been a lot of games where they just haven't got their guys. We played the Heat, and they didn't have uh, – I, they didn't have Jimmy Butler. Yeah. So you know, play, playing the backups, playing the replacement players, that matters. It's great that they're winning these games. That's a step that they didn't take last year. 
but you got to look at the big picture. Like, are they beating teams at full strength? You've seen them play teams at full strength and get helped. Okay. Right. Like when they played the Warriors not that long ago, they destroyed them. Yeah. Yeah. They have a great opportunity tonight. This is a yeah. very, really good game. Yeah. Really good opportunity for them to come out with the Jared Allen team. is questionable for this game with a non COVID illness. Ooh. Is uh, that scumbag Grayson Allen playing? No. Out. He is this out. is his game that he's suspended for. Giannis is probable for tonight's game. He's playing, yeah. Yeah. So. And Cavs are rocking with pretty much the same old. Same old usuals. Uh, no Jared Allen, possibly. Obviously, no Lowry Markkinen. So, mm-hmm. probably going to be the Darius Garland, Isaac Okoro, Dean Wade. Evan Dean Lowry. Wade. The real, the, the real D Wade. The real D Wade. The real D Wade. D Wade, and his name is Dean. Dean Wade is fine. He's fine. He's a meme, but he's but he but he is D, the real D Wade. He's okay, but he's not the real D Wade. <laughs> that's the you know that's the joke, right? Exactly. We all know that. <laughs> that's a good note to end on. Yeah, we're ending the broadcast in three. Two, one.